Hey guys, welcome back to Edible TV. Big things to be getting into. Manchester United, transfer news, Frankie De Jong, all of that. Look guys, um, Anthony, that deal we were linked to a couple of weeks ago, it's died down for the last couple of weeks, but reports have come out this morning that that deal was, look, it's on the way to towards 60 million. And for me, and Kunku's worth around the same price. Um, and then you've got Darwin Nunes, who is almost double the price at 100 million. Benfica won 100 million for him. And I'm just confused whether, look, did, let's talk about Frankie de Jong for a bit before I, before I continue what I was saying. Frankie de Jong, right? We want to get him. Barcelona won't, for me, Barcelona won't, won't let him go unless it's around 19 million. And not just that. There's been, been reports coming out today that apparently Barcelona have accepted that Frankie de Jong will have to leave the summer. I don't know how true that is because, look, for me, Barcelona are in financial ruin. Uh insecurity financially look it's one of them things where for me if it comes an amount where they can't deny it comes down to convincing Frankie de Jong and I don't think Frankie de Jong will want to come and I've said this so many times now I'd rather not have him if he doesn't want to be here and if Barcelona have accepted it really they should really take whatever comes because essentially if we give them 60 70 mil they'll probably take it now it's about convincing Frankie de Jong that's why we had Ralph Frenix to convince players he's not here anymore um He's not a consultant. So it's one of them things where I thought Ralph Frenick would have been a good person to have at Manchester United for those things to convince players to come to Manchester United and build the club. You know, that's what that's what he was there to do. And he's, look, he's not here. So forget about Ralph Frenick. But look, Frank de Jong, 50 million, apparently we've, we've put in an offer for Frankie de Jong. Barcelona have apparently accepted that he will have to leave in the summer. Um, for me, at this point, it's... I don't think it will happen because he doesn't want to come. It's as simple as that. I don't think it will happen because he doesn't want to come. I'd rather he not come if he doesn't want to come, basically. Um, so for me, leave Frankie de Jong. And for, at this point, I feel like, how is it going to be? If we miss out on Frankie de Jong, are we going to put in a bunch of money on, on Darwin Nunes just because we missed out on a player who's really good and who's worth a lot of money? Is it going to be the same situation with Frankie de Jong if we miss out on Darwin Nunes? They're going to put in 90, 100 million for Frankie de Jong. I, 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 it just sounds like a Manchester United thing to do, in my opinion. Um... So yeah, we'll have to see what happens. But this Anthony deal is interesting because we were linked to him a couple of weeks ago and it died down for a bit. £60 million. And Konku, Darwin Nunez, Anthony, these are players we'll be linked to the last month or so. For me, getting Konku, £60 million, around the same. More of a dynamic dynamic attacker. I wouldn't even say striker, I'd say attacker. Um, and that's it. Look, for me, we need an attacking player who can play in the striker position with Ronaldo next season. And I'd rather get in Kanku than a hundred million pound player who's pretty much unproven in, in 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 the highest, in the most you know competitive league in the world in in the Premier League. He's had one fantastic season in in the Portuguese league, and that's it. Even the seasons before that, he was okay, but he wasn't standing out like he did last season. So, um, so we have to see what happens. But guys, look, forget Frankie De Jong. In my opinion, let's go for in Kanku. Let's go for Frankie De uh, for um. Uh, let's go for Nkanku. Let's let's keep you know Anthony in that situation in that in that conversation. Ruben Neves, Matilda Nunes, like I mentioned in my previous video. So we need to see what happens there. But look for me, it's going to be an interesting one soon because I do think that I do feel a signing coming up soon. Um, there's nothing where reports have come out, you know, claiming that we're close to signing in one because we're not. We're we're quite clearly not. But uh, guys. Next thing things to be getting into is what is is where is the fullback position? Because for me, a lot of reports have been coming out within the last couple of weeks that Delo is in Ten Hag's plans, right? When Bissaka seems to be on sale, um, there was rumours of him going to Crystal Palace, back to Crystal Palace, <clears throat> and the fullback position kind of scares me because if one of Tellez or Wan Bissaka and Delo go, we're going to need another fullback. Williams, I'm not sure if he's going to be part of Ten Hag's. Uh, plan next uh, next season so fullback is an area that's clearly not a priority for Manchester United midfield is striker position is and center back is so you know we need to see what happens but apparently we've also been linked to Bastoni at center back so there's a lot of players there's a lot of players and we can be talking about all the players we're linking to who we would prefer but at this point really we're being linked to too many players and there's not one deal that's really set on to get towards the final stages. Frankie De Jong is still, is still a player who we're constantly being linked to and we're constantly trying to get. Say, <clears throat> same with Darwin Nunes. These are the two players we're being linked to the most. And like I've been saying, I'm really worried that if we don't get one of these players, other players will go. Ruben Neves obviously wants to leave. Uh, Matilda Nunes is a player who's up and coming. 
fantastic player in the midfield for sporting and he's a player who could leave and will miss out on him so this is something that i'm really quite worried about so um let's see what happens with that let's see what happens but let's also you know reports coming out today on twitter and everything that look there's no plan to sell marcus rashford and you know what it's fair enough because i think that marcus rashford is still a player who a lot you know a lot of people gave him hate this past season I do think he's a player who's low on confidence. I do think he's a player who needs to analyse his game. And I think I think Ten Hag will help him out next season. I do think that Marcus Rashford, with some changes in his in in his uh, in his approach in terms of his decision making and his uh pretty much his decision making on the pitch, I think when it comes to his finishing, when it comes to his final pass, when it comes to his ability to, you know, know when to pass and know when to shoot, it's pretty much his decision making all over the place in every single area. Um is what's been lacking this past season. So for me, for Rashford, I'm not upset over that. I know a lot of people want Rashford gone, but think about the seasons he's had. He's he's had good seasons at Man United, and I think he's one of these players who eventually, if he look, if he plays like he did under Rolly, um in the season before he left, I mean, he'll stand out. But yeah, even then, again, with Ronaldo in the team, I think a lot's changed. It's understandable when you have a target man like Ronaldo, and then you've got other players who also want to score. But when you have someone who's such a good goal scorer, Ronaldo, no one's really close to him in the team. Let's be honest. No one's really close in terms of goal scoring ability. Bruno Fernandes is probably there. Rashford is probably there at his best. But not not really close to him at all. When you have someone like Martial, Greenwood, uh, you know, the man who shall not be named, and Marcus Rashford. These are players who look, yeah, Martial wanted to play as a striker. Rashford, you know, for some people is a striker. But they're not the type of striker that Ronaldo is. Obviously not. It's like Man City. It's almost at times like you're playing a false nine. You, anyone can score in the team. And look, is that, is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? Do we want Ronaldo to stay? I don't know a lot of people want him to go because they think he's ruining the fluidity in the team in terms of allowing other players to, to score and allowing the freedom for other attacking players. Whereas it seems like we're we're trying to feed him every time, which a lot of people don't like. A lot of people like the way City play. And that's why a lot of people think that Harlan coming into Man City might ruin the system. But I don't think so. I think there's a lot of overthinking going on in terms of the, the striker position and, and the attacking players and Marcus Rashford. We need to see what happens there, but but guys, I'm excited to see what happens this season. Next season coming up now. Um, no, no deal was at that at their final stages. Let's be honest. So guys, let me know what you think. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Not all guys later.